Hi everyone, this is going to be emergency nursing tips for new grads in the ER by a fellow ER nurse. So this video is intended for new grads who haven't yet hit the floor. These are going to be things that they, they need to be doing ahead of time. Things need to be looking up, getting more familiarized with so that once they do hit the floor, they can do better and be just a little more familiar with what's going on on the unit and the floor. Okay. Just super quick background before we get started is that this is purely informational and educational. So follow your hospital's policies and guidelines and listen to what your preceptor says, okay? What is ER nursing? To keep it simple, it's fun, it's chaotic, it can be draining at times, but it is definitely worth it at the end of the day, okay? So one thing that I want you to do, once you do get on the floor though, it's going to be a scavenger hunt. As an ER nurse, knowing where your supplies are is extremely, extremely important. You never know what type of patient is going to be coming into those doors. So you have to know exactly where things are at so you can go get them and take care of your patient. On that note, though, being proactive, not reactive, is the most important thing for an ER nurse. Whenever you have your rooms, you want to go in there, check in. Make sure there's ambu bags, make sure the suction is readily available, make sure that everything you need to connect the patient to the monitor is there. You want to check your glycometers in the morning, making sure they're ready to go for the day. You want to have all these things set up so that once a actual sick patient comes in, you're ready to go, ready to roll, ready to stabilize them and get them going, okay? So when you first start though, I want you to know phone numbers. I want you to get a little book and write down the important phone numbers. So what is your RT's phone number? What is x-rays phone number, ultrasound, uh, CTs, MRIs? What is the charge nurse's phone number, your provider's phone number? These are numbers that you're going to be using on a regular basis, on a daily basis. So I want you to write them down. You may not memorize them for a while because you're just going to be getting a lot of information at one time. But I want you to write the phone numbers down, okay? I want you to know where the restraints are. I want you to know the, where the pumps, the tubing, and IV supplies are. I want you to know where the, your PIXs are. In your unit some pixels will have certain medications and not others so i want you to know which pixels has which medications in each you know i want you to know where your io gun is i want you to know where your glucometer is and how to check it i want you to know where the ekg machine is and i want you to know how to take an ekg i want you to know where the foley's are where the warming and cooling devices are i want you to know the crash cart where each of them is i want you to know where the pediatric crash cart is versus the adult crash cart I want you to know the crash card like the back of your hand. I want you to take a day with your preceptor or whoever and just open up a crash card perhaps after one has been used. Look through each drawer. What's in each drawer? Where are all the meds? How do you use the monitor on top of it? I want you to know the crash card again like the back of your hand. This is an ER nurse's crown jewel, the crash card. I want you to know where the chest tubes are, where the central line kits are. I want you to know where the arterial line kits are. These are going to be very important for a lot of your sick patients, especially the central lines and A lines. And I want you to know where the airway supplies are. That's going to be something that RT uh, usually handles. But as an ER nurse, you have to be very adaptable and flexible. Sometimes your RT will be busy with another patient and your patient starts crashing. You have to know at least the basics of airway in order to stabilize your own patient, okay, till the RT is able to come by. So these are some of the more important things that I want you to look up and know like the back of your hand once you do hit the floor, okay? So just to summarize again, your phone numbers, your PIXs, glucometers, EKG machines, your crash cart, your chest tube, central line kit, a line kit, and your airway supplies. Figure out where they're at, okay? Some levels to, competent, to competency as far as uh, being an ER nurse. I think that in the beginning from the one month to three to four month stage, it's just a lot of information being thrown at you. You're learning just to be comfortable being in the environment and you're not competent at all, but you're slowly building your confidence. At around the three to nine month mark, you start getting a little more confident, getting a little more familiar with the disease processes that start coming in. And it's not, I think, till about one year-ish that you start feeling better. You can handle what's coming in through those doors. You don't get anxious, you don't get nervous, you're more confident, you just do. That's gonna be around one year in. So it is gonna take a little while, but so does everything else, especially things that are hard. And the ER is very difficult, but it's very rewarding. So give it time. It's gonna be about a year in till you feel better with your skills and your critical thinking. 
And then anything seasoned, what I would think is seasoned is anything two, three years up. You've seen some stuff. You've been through a lot of scenarios. You kind of know what to expect. You get those gut feelings when something isn't, isn't right. And most importantly, you know that you don't know everything. You know to look stuff up. You know to count on your other nurses. You do a nursing consult, meaning that you ask a fellow nurse, hey, have you done this? Can you show me this? What do you think about this? What would you do in this situation? And you know that you can also count on your providers, kind of ask them questions, learn from them. Um, but that's something that should be taught in here too. Just know that you don't know everything. And if you don't know something, look it up. The worst thing that you can do is hurt a patient and hurt yourself by thinking that you know everything and that you can do anything. No, you're never going to know anything, especially in the ER. Okay, now let's talk about diseases to familiarize yourself with. This is for sure not an all-inclusive list, but these are going to be some common things that you see in the ER repeatedly. So I want you to start here. Learn the basics of each. Know the basic treatments of each. And more importantly, know the acute presentations of each of these diseases and how you stabilize and treat these diseases acutely. Um, there's a lot of information out there on like long-term care and that kind of stuff, and it is amazing that you know that but in the beginning i want you to focus on the acute aspect of these individual diseases okay so just to name a few well we won't go through all of them you can just pause the video and look at each of them and i highly highly urge you to do this beforehand for each of these so that once you do hit the floor you have a basic understanding of each um so just for the from the top chf exacerbation uh, you're going to see that repeatedly. You're going to see a lot of uh, heart attacks. You're going to see a lot of ACLS. I want you to look up each of these beforehand. And know what kind of signs and symptoms you're going to see. How to different, differentiate these signs and symptoms from other diseases. And how to treat them acutely in the ER and how to stabilize them. Uh, now on to some respiratory stuff. Look up a PE, asthma exacerbation, COPD exacerbation, pneumonia. Again, look them up. What are some of the things that providers are going to be ordering? What are some of the medications that you should expect? Some of the treatments that you should expect? How to stabilize these patients in the ER when they're coming in super sick? Um, neural stuff that's important are strokes, hemorrhagic versus ischemics, uh, brain bleeds, you know, some duros, that kind of stuff, uh, seizures, uh, aneurysms, encephalitis, meningitis multiple sclerosis, all of these, look them up before you hit the floor because I guarantee you that you will see them and you don't want to be the type of nurse that hasn't, that doesn't even have the basic fundamental information. So you can look a lot of this stuff up before you hit the floor and you should have a basic understanding already, but I want you to focus on the acute care and stabilization of these specific diseases. I want you to know DKA like the back of your hand. I want you to know hypoglycemia like the back of your hand, a little thyroid storm there too as well. I want you to know alcohol withdrawals and delirium tremens, how to treat that, what are some of the complications, how to monitor for complications. I want you to know like alcohol intoxication and meth intoxication. How about PCP intoxication? I want you to know overdose on heroin and opioids and how you treat that as well. I want you to know the basics of your GI bleeds, upper versus lower, different treatments, uh, varicoses related to cirrhosis, pancreatitis. Uh, obstructions, bowel infarctions, know your anemia like the back of your hand, know the different types of shocks and how do you treat each type of shock, know um, about dialysis patients, what's important with them, know about UTIs, know about rhabdo, um, know about AKI, know some of the cancer complications, you can get a lot of cancer patients and you want to know some of the complications related to uh, radiation and chemotherapy and that kind of stuff because they will be coming in with a lot of complaints and you have to know what to look for, and when is it an emergency, that kind of stuff. And then know some basic trauma stuff, know some burns. I also want you to know some of the acute care uh, psych things. What if a patient overdoses on a medication? What if they overdose on their all of their psych medication? What if they are trying to hurt themselves? What if they're trying to hurt someone else? What kind of things are you watching out for with psychiatric interventions and stabilization? Next is going to be important medications that I want you to look up again beforehand. You, it, as far as medications, it's going to be difficult to know a lot of the titrating and that kind of stuff 
without actually doing it, but I at least want you to know the basics of what each medication is supposed to do. So that once you do hit the floor and you start titrating a lot of these medications, you are at least familiar with their function, okay? So I'm not gonna list them off, but these are a lot of important critical care meds that you're gonna be seeing in the ER that I want you to at least have a basic understanding before you hit the floor. So as far as pressures, when a patient has really low blood pressure, so norepi, epinephrine, phenylephrine, dopamine, dobutamine, and vasopressin, I want you to know what each is for, which type of receptor they act on, when is it best used for which type of disease process. And all of that you wanna know for each of these medications, your blood pressure lowering medications, you know, like your nitride, nitroglycerin, cardine, labetalol, your heart rate medications like cardizem, metropolol, a little esmolol, a little ami, uh, your sedation meds after intubation, just sedation in general, sedation for someone who is coming in with psychiatric complaints are going to be down here and just intubation meds if they're going to if your providers decide to intubate a patient what kind of medications are are on their uh, tool list you know which ones can they use um so i want you to get familiarized with that beforehand though, okay and then some procedures as well to familiarize yourself with are going to be intubations, as we just talked about. What is your role as the ER nurse? When they're placing central lines, what is your role? Arterial lines, a thoracentesis, a paracentesis, lumbar puncture, chest tubes, Minnesota tube placement, placing an EVD when they're doing an IND. I want you to know what your role as the nurse is in regards to these procedures and even though a lot of these it's not going to be you doing the actual procedure you have to know the basics of it you have to recognize when something is going wrong how to monitor for complications and how to stabilize those complications for example let's say your provider is putting in a central line um, up at the top and they poke a lung you know so what do you do at that point so make sure you look into these how they're done and what are some of the complications that can be uh, a result of these procedures and then i want you to look up how to how does defibrillation work how to do how to perform the de defibrillation i want you to look up pacing transcutaneous versus transvenous cardioversion how to take an ekg simple stuff also how to just connect a patient to a monitor how to, where does each lead go some hospitals use three leads some hospitals use a five lead how do you connect them which color corresponds to which side of the part of the body I want you to know how to place an IO, how to zero an A-line, how to use a ventrig, how to monitor a chest tube system. I want you to know how to suction someone who's intubated. And more importantly, when you do uh, get a little more experience with your critical care patients, how to just become comfortable with intubated patients. You know, what are some of the vent cities that you should know? When should you kind of just take the patient off the vent and start bagging them? Just being comfortable overall with your intubated patients and not being scared. I want you to know how to administer blood, how to place a Foley, an NG tube, IV placements. These are gonna be the most foundational skill that an ER processor is gonna be IV placements. And when a healthy individual comes in, it's easy. But let's say you have a, di a dialysis patient that has no type of access, someone who has um, used drugs their entire life and has no type of access, someone who is slightly overweight and you pretty much non-palpable veins, how do you go about finding access in these patients? Um, how to get an ABG, um, so not a procedure, but again, what's in your crash card? Know how to use your crash card, and that kind of goes back to a lot of the defibrillation, the pacing, the cardioversion type of stuff, but your crash card is going to be the most important thing for you as an ER nurse. And then supplies for the ER nurse, it's going to be a brain. By this, I mean a paper brain. How do you organize your thoughts? What's pending? What is each patient here for? You go through so many patients during the day that sometimes you kind of just need a paper to keep you organized. It is chaos in the ER, but it can be organized chaos at the same time if you stay uh, ready. And we'll talk about this in a future video, how to organize a paper to keep it simple. Issues here for history, what's pending, and you know, writing down critical laps that have uh, come back. I want you to have shears. You're going to be cutting through a lot of clothing, cutting through a lot of stuff. Um, so get you a good pair of shears. I want you to have a pen light. You know, you're going to be looking in, in the ears. You're going to be looking inside the mouth. You're going to be looking, most importantly, at the pupils. You're going to need a Sharpie and a pen. You're going to be, these are perfect for a lot of things that you are just going to have to write down, okay? Especially a Sharpie. And then some things that are kind of just a given, but you may not know, a good stethoscope, 
comfortable shoes you're going to be on your feet the whole time so if your feet start hurting definitely don't cheap out on, on, on shoes get you some good shoes compression socks get your military time watch uh and then kind of just read the rest and then get you a small notebook to write your notes in your own guide whenever you have specifically new patients that you came in contact with i want you to know what was done what were the treatments that you did i want you to go home look him up and just familiarize yourself familiarize yourself with so this little small notebook is kind of like your own guide to being an er nurse so you may have a certain type of patient once and then not have them again for like another six months uh so if you wrote yourself a little guide you can go back and look at your guide and kind of see what's supposed to be done for that type of patient okay okay so now these are going to be some recommended and some of these are required certs that you should get at some point in your ER nursing career. So some of the required ones are going to be your ACLS, your PALS, and your BLS, and then your NIH stroke scale. So this one's more of how to assess uh, patients' stroke symptoms and how to grade them on this uh, specific grading uh, thing that they have. Uh, so these are for sure going to be required, but eventually it would be nice for you to get your CEN, which is a certified emergency nurse. So it just kind of says, hey, like he or she knows what they're doing. They have studied and so forth, so forth. Eventually as well, you should try to get the ENPC, which is the emergency nursing pediatrics course, especially if your hospital doesn't see a lot of pediatric patients. It is great to have this in your uh, tool belt because you may have a super sick kid that comes in and if you don't see a lot of them and a lot of them and haven't taken this class at least it will be difficult for you to uh, stay confident stay cool calm and collected and take the take care of the patient appropriately and then your tntc which is more trauma and then your ed triage so a lot of these are encouraged but for sure these first ones are going to be mandated by a lot of your er so even be on the floor what are we going to cover in the future so we're going to cover a lot of the diseases that we talked about a lot of the procedures that we talked about like rsi placing a chest tube that kind of stuff we're going to talk about some quick assessments focus assessments specifically for the er we're going to talk about meds that we talked about we're going to go further into some charting as well charting is very important as a cya type of thing and you have to know how to be quick with your charting and be precise um, so we'll talk about that as well in the future we'll be talking about assessment questions, how to give report, how to receive report. We're going to talk about some safety tips and also how to organize your, your brain. I think the next video will be how to organize your brain. And after that, we're going to go on some safety tips for an ER nurse, especially as new grad. If you enjoy the video and you start uh, coming back to the channel, if you want to support uh, for more videos, you can just go on to Emergency Chaos. It's a little Etsy store. I sell some shirts. Um, you don't have to do this by all means, but if you do want to support, uh, I would uh, greatly appreciate it. And just to finish it off on one very, very, very important thing for ER nurses is that teamwork makes the dream work. Um, it's going to be very important that if your nurses and your fellow coworkers are drowning, that you help them, If especially if you're not drowning. There's certain times when everything kind of just hits the fan and everyone is drowning everyone's doing their own thing kind of stabilizing their own patients but if you're not drowning and you're just charting and your fellow co-worker is drowning you get your butt up and you go help them teamwork makes the dream work because i guarantee that there you will be in a position someday where your patients are super sick and your co-workers aren't helping you because you don't help them so i want you to foster a teamwork makes a dream work type of environment in your own hospital okay well, till next time. Bye, guys.